Yeah, so everyone, welcome back to another video here on I'm Clear here with myself, Seamus Brady, our host. And for this one, I am joined by Kieran Breslin, a member of the Fermanagh Hurling team over the last few years. And Kieran, you've come on today to discuss with me this new motion. And we're just going to get straight into it. This new motion that has been pushed in the GAA and a managed decline is what it's being labelled as for the teams that are involved in the Laurie Mar tournaments. Basically, they won't be taking part in the Allianz League if this motion does pass. Now, we were chatting off air for a bit there. I can't make sense of why they would do this. It doesn't make sense to me in any way, shape or form. But you were talking to me. You know more about it than I do off air, obviously, as a man who has skin in the game there with Fermana. What is this to someone who doesn't quite understand what this is? Yeah, well, the, the apparent aim of this proposal is something I feel we can all respect. The, the, the driving force of this is that they want to grow Hurland in uh, some of the counties that are a bit behind in terms of herd development. And I totally respect that. And I think any Hurland person will totally respect that. But the, the current proposal is just so wrong on, in, on so many levels, it's hard to know where to begin in terms of achieving that goal. There's three, uh, so the idea is that this proposal will affect any counties that have uh, less than five adult hurling teams in, the, in their county. So at the moment, that affects five counties. It affects Fermanagh, it affects Longford, Loud, Cavan, and Leitrim. So most of those counties would have competed around the Laurie Maher and Nicky record, lowered uh, league divisions anyway. So it, it, there is a correlation there probably between, you know, few hurling clubs and success at county level. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to build hurling in, in, these, in these counties. But the way they're doing it is really wrong. And, and so this is what the proposal means for those five counties. First of all, they're going to be confined to the Laurie Maher and Championship. As it stands, the Laurie Maher is the fifth of five uh, inter-county hurling championships. Lee McCarthy being first, Joe McDonough second, Christy Ring third, Nicky Record fourth, and then Laurie Maher fifth. The, um, as a Fermanagh player, I can speak from a Fermanagh perspective, we played in the Nicky Record the last two years because we, we earned that. We won the Laurie Maher in 21. I wasn't involved in that particular team, but I was involved in the Nicky Record, played Nicky Record hurling. The last two years and we were competitive last year we lost a game against only by six points every other game was a two-point loss a one-point loss or a draw so we're clearly very competitive in that division despite the fact we have less than five other teams so we deserve the opportunity to be able to compete that's going to be taken away from us come 2025 this motion is passed the second uh, proposal that they have is they want to take uh, the five counties out of the national hurling league as it stands, you have Division 1 in the Hurling League, then you have 2A, 2B, 3A and 3B, with promotion and relegation being done into the subsequent leagues, again, based on performance. What the proposal will do is it will take the five counties out of that league entirely. So uh, it's normally a six-month season for uh, Fermanagh and the associated counties. It's going to be reduced to three. And then the third step is that the plan is that in those three months, instead of putting money into putting our senior teams into a national league, what they're going to do is put um, a plan in place, as they say, and this is it. We don't really know what this plan looks like, but I'll get onto that in a second. A plan in place to grow Hurling at a grassroots level to boost the number of clubs. And then once the number of clubs in the counties has grown uh, to the number which is required, which is five, they can then rejoin the National League and then look to be uh, entered into the um, further championships beyond the Laurie Maher. Again, this idea is being sold as efforts to be made to grow hurling in these counties. There is no version of this plan that's going to achieve that. There's absolutely no correlation between what they're proposing and what they claim they're trying to achieve. The national, like, if you're a child growing up in any county and you're playing a sport, you aspire to be the best in that sport. By taking Fermanagh and, and Longford, Loud, Leitrim and Cavan out of, of top-level competitions, you're giving the kids that you're trying to promote the game to less to aspire to. Like I said, I joined in 22. It was my first year. The lads had just won the 21 Laurie Maher the year before me. One of our best days and one of my best days in the Fermanagh jersey was when we won the 2022 uh, 3B National League final against Longford, one of the other counties who's been chapted by this motion. I, you, know, you can probably tell from my accent at times, I'm not originally from Fermanagh. Mm -hmm. My father is. I'm from Dublin. St. Bridget's GA is my club in Castle Manchester area. I grew up there, went to school there. 
learned the game there. Learned it from my dad, who's a staunch man of hurling. Man. I, that's where I learned the game. That's where I grew my love of hurling. I love hurling more than any other sport, hands down. And yeah, and I went up to Fermanagh for t- started 2022 preseason training, and I met people just like me. I could have met those people in Kilkenny, Tip, Cork, Waterford, any Munster, Galway, Kilkenny, any Munster or, or top hurling county. There's no difference between the hurling people in Fermanagh and the hurling people anywhere else. And yet, despite their efforts, despite all the hurdles they've had to overcome over the years to grow the sport that they love in their county, to give kids a chance to watch their teams operate at the top level, that's now been taken away from them. These teams need to be promoted, not punished. And that's what this proposal is doing. The, 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 again, I, I respect that if their aim is to grow hurling in these counties, that's great. But that's not what this proposal is going to do. And you mentioned at the start, manage decline. That's exactly what's going to happen. How can you motivate a group of lads to really, really spend entire time preparing for a three-month competition, which in the Laurie Maher is only five games, five games a year. You're halving the amount of hurling that, that the, the, the counties are playing at a top level. And the last thing I'll say is, and I think this is important, that there's a, a guy on our team, Luca McCusker from Anna Hurler, one of our one of our best players, one of a really really exciting player in terms of in the time I've been there, he's been growing and improving, and he's really a top class forward. In October, he was on the Irish international team that played the Shinty Challenge against Scotland. He represented his country playing hurling in October. In November, he's then been told that the opportunities to play the game that he loves has been reduced. He's not the only one. I know there are people from other counties that were on that international team as well. This is so wrong. It's so wrong in terms of what they're trying. There's no correlation between what they're trying to achieve and how they're trying to achieve it. It just doesn't make sense. And there's loads more reasons to it. Like we could go on all day. No, that's it. And like it's it's great to hear you speak from the heart when it comes to it. Like you can tell that it's it must be really really annoying. It just straight up must be really really annoying because like you've been building there and it just goes against as well every other type of motion that they've been pushing in the past they've been pushing for more games it's why we've added in the calendar that's why the Talton cup came about that's why these competitions came about to get more games for so-called weaker counties to improve them and then the whole you know the issue with making sure that those games were on tv so that people could see these games being played and it would inspire the next generation to come up and play with counties how you can tell me that the games will get of a higher standard in the club if you stop them playing for years. Yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah. absolutely no, it, no sense to me. Yeah, it's, exa- it's exactly right. And um, here's the thing I was thinking, right? Well, first of all, I think it's very important to say this. Um, the way we found out as players about this motion that would affect the thing that we spend most of, if not all of our time doing and thinking about. We found out through news articles on social media. We were the second-hand recipients of this information and this idea, and yet we're the ones it's primarily going to affect. And I say, oh, now that's the current players. Future players are going to affect them too. Um, I, th- I mentioned to you off air, but I think it's important to mention um, one of the things. This it's, it, there's an underlying problem in the GAA around this. We, I mean, specifically, this motion has brought it to light. I feel, but uh, I just completed a master's in UCD in project management, and one of and for my thesis. We uh, completed, myself and my colleague, Dara Brunton, completed a, a, a project risk and stakeholder analysis of the current integration project that's going on in Gaelic Games. The idea that they're going to bring together the GAA, the LGFA and the Camogie under one umbrella organization. Ongoing project, I'm fully supportive of it. According to our research, 90, I think it's 95 plus percent of players that we surveyed are in favor of that as well. We had 1,000 responses and 600 of those were players from all three organizations. But, and the underlying theme across all players of all codes and all sports and all levels was that they do not feel that their interests are being reflected and represented by those who are making the decisions. We have that intangible data evidence from our report. And with the integration project, with any project, you need to have a stakeholder and you need to make sure that having you're looking after the people whose your project's going to affect is paramount. That has not been done in the integrations by the looks of things, but more importantly, it's 
so evident here that it's not been done in the in the in the hurling project because i'm here because i'm against it the first time i heard about it was through a news article and yet it's the wheels are already in motion to enact this and so we're playing catch up with the people who have the decision making power so it's it's just it's an underlying scene that's been brought to a head by this and other issues but particularly this within the ga for hurling people in fermanagh and the other counties yeah, so I, like I'm here because I'm against this motion, but the first time we heard about it was when the wheels are already in progress as to passing this and voting on it. Um, also, like we also don't know what exactly is being voted on because the most detailed plan that we've seen uh, in terms of taking us out of the National League and then they say they're going to spend that time instead developing hurling in our county. We have no idea what that looks like. We have no idea like the plans are in place, the structures are in place, what their targets are in terms of growing clubs in, in Fermanagh and in the other counties as well. We don't know what that looks like. So we can't have an informed discussion about this because, and again, for what it's worth, I don't think there's a, there's a way of doing that that's really worth taking us out of the league. There's no version of a plan, implementing a plan that means taking us out of the league is correct. But even, but regardless, we don't know what that even would look like. So just to communicate, it's just another example of communication with players, players being forgotten about, and yet they're one of the most important groups in the organization and the disconnect between those making the decisions and the, the, the people who will be affected by the decisions. It's just staggering. No, no, it definitely sounds like, like, to you say there, like you, you said it to me earlier as well, you, you found out about this through social media and through news articles. Like you just weren't told directly by anybody else. Uh, no. So I think the, the only time, the first time I heard about it was through the group chat when one of our, I think it was our GPA rep, sent in it into the group chat. But he sent an article into the group chat, which meant the motion had already been proposed to be voted on. So like I said, we're, we're already playing catch up. And so the, the work that has to be done now is to educate people on this issue, to, to, to get people to understand how it will affect re real hurling people who are facing barriers the whole time in developing their sport and promoting their sport and engaging in their sport. And this is just another kick in the teeth for them on high. Um, like, it's just, I think, the only reason this might pass at at the um, at the vote in December is probably more for one of three reasons. One is going to be apathy, the idea that people will understand what they're voting on but not really care. Do you know, maybe they're just not involved in hurling or they're involved in hurling but they don't really care about you know lower level counties, so they might click a button to vote yes just because they haven't really they don't care enough to put a bit of thought into it. Second one might be ignorance. Innocent enough ignorance, I'm not that. It's not a slur. It's just uh, the idea that people just wouldn't know about it. For example, I'm sure that anyone listening to this probably didn't know a lot about it before hearing it. So the education on this issue needs to be driven. And three, vindictiveness. And I have to say, I, th I do think that, that there's definitely a level of that. I do think there's an underlying agenda here of if we can take the money out of this uh, i.e. I, getting these teams into the National League, you know, we can put it somewhere else that they feel would be more in line with their own agendas. Be it, you know, they want to put more money into football teams or they want to put more money into other counties or they want to put more money into in facilities, God knows what. But the fact is, I do feel there's an element of that. Now, I don't think that's something that can be fixed short term. You know, it's, it's difficult to overcome that in the short space of time that we have. But in ignorance and apathy can definitely be solved. We need to educate people people on as to how exactly this will affect anyone else. And the way I feel I can do that is the people I meet in Fermanagh are no less passionate about hurling than I've met anywhere else in the country, having grown up in Dublin. They they know as much, if not more, about it. They care as much, if not more, about it, and they practice it as much, if not more, than anyone I've ever met. And they're the ones being punished simply because they're in the minority. So they spent their entire lives driving as the minority, doing something that they love despite all their barriers, and now they're been putting another one in front of their face. 
I really fear for what this might mean for Hurland in our counties because I think there's a very, very real version of these county teams not existing anymore. And to that point, if these teams don't exist anymore, what's the point in developing at grassroots level? They have nothing to grow up into. They have nothing to aspire to. They have nothing to educate themselves on. So then you hurling dies entirely. That is a very, very real concern and consequence if this motion is passed. Yeah, no, well said. And, and like when you look at other stuff as well, for Mana, underneath that, like Liznaski, Liz Emmett's, and Aaron Gales, they're back up at senior hurling now to join the long established Liz Bellew St. Patrick's. That's from an article by Declan Bogues. I'm getting that information. And like you just have that there. What, as you said perfectly, what's the point of having a grassroots level if you don't have anything to go up to? It's like having yeah. development squads that don't lead to a senior team. There's no point. Where are they going to go? And look, the reality is when you when you put it this way, we celebrate in Gaelic football counties who overachieve. We celebrate in Gaelic football counties that move up the divisions and challenge teams that are above them. Monaghan are the perfect example how many times they've survived in Division 1 and every time they do, it's celebrated. And the fact that there's only so many people living in Monaghan has brought up time and time again. You look at counties like Leitrim, for example, who have one of the smallest populations in Ireland, Longford the same. How can it be their fault that they have less clubs than Dublin, a county with 1.4 million people? Like, it's not fair in that regard. But then on top of that as well, like Luca McCusker, you made a great point about him. How is he good enough to play for Ireland against Scotland in the Hurling versus Shinty, but apparently shouldn't be allowed to play for Fermanagh in the league? And then to round it off, the last point that I'm going to throw back to you is, for the life of me, I just can't understand what the issue is. Like, why, why, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And in my opinion, there was nothing wrong with the way that it was. The league was fine. Teams are playing at the level that they can compete at. And you were competing in the Nicky Rackard when you went up. Like, I've read it there. You beat Mayo in the Cup last season, like, which was an amazing achievement for Fermanagh. And why why change that? It didn't seem to be bothering anyone. It's not like there was a huge amount of money being lost on it. And when you see other stuff that they're spending money on, it, it does make you be like, what was the issue with keeping this going? Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, you, you touched on a lot of really uh, important points there. I would like to, you know, you mentioned Monaghan's population. So again, I just want to bring it back to Fermanagh simply because that's the um, team that I would know the most about. The the target is five hurling clubs. In Fermanagh, we had there was only one for a very long time, Lisbeth Law St. Patrick. And as you said now, Ern Gales from Balik and Listen Ski Emmets and Listen Ski have both uh, uh, put out adult teams this year in the junior championship in Fermanagh, Ern Gales being the winner of that this year. And there are also numerous more clubs that are growing uh, underage teams. But I know Balnalek being one. Um, you know, I think Timor, I believe, or another, I could go with the list of clubs that are starting to develop under uh, teams at their underage level. The point I would love to make, just if you're comparing it to football, Fermanagh only has, I don't know the exact number, but it's in the region of 20 clubs anyway. So it disproportionately affects a team like Fermanagh, and Leitrim with an even smaller population than Fermanagh, again, I'm sure there's something similar there. But Again, Fermanagh only have 20 clubs, and yet you're asking them to, to automatically get another two hurling clubs, given the work that's already been done by, not, like, by 2025. Otherwise, they're going to be punished for the efforts that they've made to date. Like I say, you know, they're growing. It's going in the right direction already. The Tawn Oak structure that they've put in place to create development squads, to encourage young lads who want to play hurling for their counties to do so. Longford and Fermanagh and Cavan and they, these, all these counties play against each other at under 15s, under 17s and development squads. The work that's been done is massive. So, like you said, for the life of me, I don't, as you say, when it's broke, don't fix it. I don't understand what the agenda is here in terms of if the goal is to promote hurling in these counties. Please point out to me how that's not being done already. I mean, I'm sure there's room for improvement, as with anything. But the way to do it isn't improvement, not to you know, blow up the whole operation because that is what's going to happen. How do you encourage a guy who is putting on a Balanick jersey to go out and play hurling? How can you encourage him to do that? 
when he doesn't have a Fermanagh team to watch when the intercounty season is on. It just doesn't make sense. It, it, like, and, you, you know, and particularly the league, I think it's very easy maybe to dismiss the league as kind of a secondary competition. But no, in my two years in Fermanagh, our two best days of those seasons were in the league. You mentioned there, we beat Mayo. Fermanagh beat Mayo in the National Hurling League. Mayo aren't been threatened to take out of this, and yet we beat them in the league last year. So that doesn't make sense. Secondly, we won a league final. It was one of the best days in Fermanagh Hurling, aside from the Laurie Matters that they've won. We've won a league final against Longford. The support we had, the passion in that game, that match was the most intense match I've ever played in my life. Be it the standard, be it the speed, be it what was on the line, and be it the tangible passion coming from the fans in the stand. Having grown up playing club hurling in Dublin my entire life, Dublin is considered one of the top hurling counties. And yet I'm saying that my, my most intense experience playing hurling was in a Fermanagh jersey. That's not an accident. That's down to the people and the work that's been done to date. And it's under massive stress with the current proposal. Um, this, I mean, uh, we could go on all day, really, Seamus. There's so many reasons why this is just wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, you, it's easy enough to throw the money argument out, but like, I would even just say, like, let's assume for a second that the intentions behind this are purely to fix hurling. Well, not fix. Fix is the wrong word because there's nothing wrong. Grow hurling. Grow hurling in these counties. The work has been done to do that already, and what you're doing is going to ruin that. So. There's no matchup between what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to achieve it. It's just, it's bonkers. It doesn't make sense. And it's going to hurt a lot of people in the meantime as well. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it makes no sense. For me, it's like saying you're trying to empty. <laughs> it's like saying you're trying to empty a cup by pouring more water into it. Like, it's just, it doesn't make sense. You are trying to say that you're growing the game by taking away what the end goal is. That's like saying, oh, yeah. we're trying to make a competition better by taking away a final. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't and, and make think, sense. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the important thing here... No, no, uh, again, you, you, speak, well, you speak about it a lot better than I can because, like, as you said, like, you, and even though, as you said, you're, you're over in Dubai now, you're not actually in the Fermanagh panel right now, but those are lads that you played with, those are lads that you went to war with in those league finals and in those league games so it must be really frustrating for lads that have again put their shoulder to the wheel drove themselves out to train and like put the work in like any other player and it, it is it, like in my mind it just comes down to cut everything else it's such a lack of respect to the guys that have been putting the work in both on the pitch and off the pitch to grow the game you should be giving them a, a bit of a helping hand why would you not? Why would you stop playing the games and then use that money to put back into the grassroots? That makes no sense. But help them to grow the clubs there with money that they can bring in through the competitions makes no sense to me anyway. And I, like, I would love to see a statement come out. I would love to see a statement come out where they say exactly why, with a detailed plan of how this is going to happen, what's going to be implemented, by what dates. But I think, in my mind, that's a tactic. To be tactically silent, to be tactically vague. So you can't be caught for anything then. If you say you're going to do this by this point and then you don't do it, well, if you never said you were going to do it, well, then players can't point to anything that you haven't done. But here we are. And what is the way forward? Well... Uh... The people involved in hurling in these counties, the hurling people in these counties are doing their absolute best to try and stop it by promoting and raising awareness of this issue. But it is going to come to the top level people, the people with the biggest audiences in hurling circles and GA circles to prevent this. And I've already seen that the wheels have started to turn in that regard. I think it was best summed up by Eddie Brennan. He put up a tweet uh, during the week that said, all of us involved in hurling have an absolute and total obligation to ensure this proposed cutting of competition is stopped. I don't think it can be summarized in a better way than that. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie, you know, obviously Eddie has a big platform in the hurling world himself, so it's great to hear him speak out against it. Neil McManus has spoken out, a recently retired Antrim hurler, has spoken out in a similar vein against this proposal, speaking about how it doesn't make sense the right people need to be contacted in this. So to any hurling people listening, if you're in touch with 
any hurling people from any county who have representatives on county boards or at the CCCC, please, please speak to them because I, if you don't, if you don't understand the, the effect that the passing of this proposal will have to the sport that we all love in areas who need the support the most, I promise you it'll be devastating. And to those who do already understand, then I would go so far as to say you have an obligation to protect the game by speaking up against this, by making sure the right people know this and come the vote in December, the right people have the right information to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, no, well said. Well said. Look, it's not an ideal situation, but we'll keep the wheels turning. Keep an eye on this as well and make sure that hopefully this does not pass. Anyway, it's been a pleasure having you on, Kieran. Thank you. Thanks, James, for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem at all.